from this time and forevermore. Blessed be the name, the name of the Lord. Some people seem to want to think that God has it in for them. I guess it's their way of eliminating their personal responsibility for their rebellion. I'm not saved? Well, it's God's fault is their way of dealing with life. Others want God to save them without their changing and being who he wants them to be. It's the God knows I'm not perfect, but he loves me anyway approach to life. Neither of these views prompts the individual to seek God's way. One view shakes its fist at God and the other says God has to take me the way I am without any effort on my part to come to him. The truth is, God loves the world, the entire world, and wants all to be saved. If he doesn't want the entire world to be saved, then he only gave his son as a sacrifice for part of the world. Calvinism actually teaches that Jesus only died for part of the world. That clearly implies that God only loved part of the world. However, the truth is clearly stated in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Is that the entire world, or only a limited quantity of the whole? Well, we've noted a few passages in our previous studies, but let's dig in a little deeper and find out for certain what God really says about who he wants to save. Let's start with the point I made a few weeks ago from 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Now the Calvinist teaches that the all in this text is only the elect that God chose before the foundation of the world. However, the Calvinist also teaches that the elect cannot come to repentance until God gives them his irresistible grace and call of the Spirit. So my question is, what is God waiting for? According to the Calvinists, God is waiting for himself to save these people. That's absurd. Added to that is the fact that God is being patient toward the sinners, not his own supposed procrastination. And finally, we find that God doesn't want any to perish. To say that he just doesn't want the chosen to perish would mean that he does want all others to perish. Not at all. This verse is reminiscent of Ezekiel 33:11, which says, Say to them, As I live, declares the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. Why then will you die, O house of Israel? As God wanted all of Israel to repent, he now wants all mankind to repent. And let me point out that the language of 2 Peter 3, 9 is as universal in scope as the language of verses 5 through 7 of 2 Peter 3. This is as much about the entire human race as the flood of Genesis was about the entire human race. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, we read this. My little children, I am writing these things to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. If salvation were only the elect, chosen before time began, then who is the whole world in this text? The blood of Jesus was shed for our sins, but not just ours, according to John. It was also for the whole world. That's everyone. Just as all is everyone in 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 through 4. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Who are the all in this text? Well, some say it's, it only refers to those who were individually chosen before time began. The context, however, has to establish the scope. And verses 1 and 2 make it clear that more than the elect are under consideration. I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men for kings and all who are in authority. 
Moving down in the text, Paul says, For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony born at the proper time. Other texts may be found, for example, John 1, verse 29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The word world is used 78 times in John's gospel. I believe he was trying to tell his readers something. This is the word used in John 3.16 of those whom God so loved that he saved. Don't ever doubt that God loves you and every other human. He wants everyone to be saved, but he has lovingly given us that choice, and it's up to us to choose eternal life rather than eternal death.